Believe it or not, my friends, this device has changed the way I've been editing for the past couple of months now, and it's really sped up my workflow when it comes to, you know, photo editing, video editing, but not just that, but general tasks, and it has been incredible. I do want to break this down and go a little bit deeper into what this actually does and how it's going to help you when it comes to your content creation and general tasks as well. So let's get it. This is called the Logitech MX Creative Console. Now it comes in two different sections. You've got the dial pad, but you've also got the keypad as well. The great thing about this is that they are separate, so you can actually customize it on your table. And one of the biggest things about that when it comes to workflow is that this is going to fit within your workflow, depending on which app you're actually going to be using. I use Premiere Pro, Photoshop, Lightroom, all those kind of apps when it comes to my content creation. And when I actually switch over to a different app, it's going to have all my shortcuts for that specific app changed over straight away, which is incredible. So this isn't a proper unboxing because I've had this device for a couple of months now, but you get the MS Creative dial pad, the MX Creative keypad, you get a USB-C to USB-C cord, you get a card that actually gives you an Adobe Creative Cloud exclusive offer, which is a free three months of Adobe Creative Cloud on all apps to new and current members, which is priced at about 263 Australian dollars. You get a little bit of paperwork, there's two AA batteries, and you get the MX Creative dial pad stand and you can get the MX Creative Console in pale white, or you can get it in graphite. So now let's talk about the price. Now the price will obviously vary depending on your location. So you can get this now for 199 US, which is incredible. And it ends up being about 349 Australian dollars. Now, first of all, we got to talk about the MX Creative dial pad. Now this thing is incredible, mainly for the fact that I don't actually have this jog wheel on my actual keyboard itself. My fingers, when it comes to Premiere Pro, literally stays on my keyboard the whole time. But I've actually programmed everything I need where I've actually got those fingers to be directly on this device, but it's more accurate and easier for me to actually do uh, the tasks that I actually need it to do. And specifically with that jog wheel, that's going to allow me to go across my timeline so much more accurate. I can literally go frame by frame so much more simple than using my mouse. Now, the way I personally have this programmed for Premiere Pro specifically is that this jog wheel actually goes across my timeline nice and simple at a very steady pace. You can actually change the speed that you can actually jog across as well from say 0% all the way up to 100% in terms of speed. Uh, obviously, it will depend on just how you want to use it, but it does give you that ability through the Logi Options Plus app to make it fully customizable. And in terms of customization through the Logi Options Plus app, you can go Go over to the search bar and you can search whatever shortcut you actually need within your particular app. So I'm clicked on Premiere Pro here and I can search cut and it will show me all the cut versions that they actually have when it comes to these customizable features. And it really just comes down to whatever suits your workflow within the specific app you're actually using. Now, when it comes to this specific device, and if I am going in between, say, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Adobe Audition, or even just Lightroom, when I'm doing some multitasking, this will actually change over specifically to that app. So I can go into my Logi Options Plus app and program this for each specific program that I'm going to be using and have specific shortcuts for this. And if you need a little bit of a starting point, you can actually click on the default profile, which will give you some basic shortcuts already, or you can go over to the marketplace and download different ones uh, that would be available for your particular program. Or you can just start with a blank profile and customize it to however you want. Now, one of the biggest benefits that I actually find out of this when it comes to Lightroom and actually color grading is the actions ring. That is incredible. I don't actually use the action ring when it comes to color grading in Premiere Pro because my color grading process is a little bit more extensive than what the action ring actually can give me. But when it comes to Lightroom, just my primaries is perfectly fine. My highlights, shadows, overall exposure, contrast, all those adjustments I can actually have in that action ring. Now, one of the biggest features that I love about the action ring is you can click that button and hover over the specific adjustment, and then you can use that jog wheel to do minor adjustments or obviously go faster and major adjustments, but it's so much more accurate than utilizing your mouse to try and make those adjustments. Now, generally, when it comes to my photography, I will mainly adjust one photo and then copy and paste it to the rest of the photos. 
But this is where the action ring comes into play as well, is that when I actually adjust it to all the other photos, my exposure is a little bit up and down because I'm actually, you know, shooting in manual, uh, the sun might change or something might change. And all I need to do is just hover over that specific exposure slider and just turn down the exposure a little bit to try and make it all consistent. But same again, you can do micro adjustments with shadows, highlights, blacks, whites, whatever you need to customize it within that action ring. And also because it's a Logitech device, it's pretty much the same as like your mouse and keyboard where you can actually pair it directly with Bluetooth or that lightning bolt adapter through your USB. But the cool thing is that if I do actually take this out in the field and if I am traveling, I can actually just connect it directly to Bluetooth to my Mac and that's perfectly fine. There's a button on the back that gives you three different stations that you can literally press the button, change it over to the newest device and it will connect directly to that device straight away, which is incredible. Now, the last thing about this device is that it is battery powered. So it's just two AA batteries at the bottom. You can change out whenever you want. Now, this is where things get extremely exciting. Now, I didn't really use this one at first. This is the MX Creative keypad. Now, I didn't really find the use for it because my right hand generally sits on my mouse and that's kind of where it usually stays. I've programmed a few things on my actual mouse itself uh, through the Logi Options Plus app. It's pretty incredible how you've, they've got a full ecosystem now, but this keypad is really impressive, mainly for the fact that you have nine buttons on the front here. Then you've got a left and right sort of button at the bottom that you can switch pages. So you've got nine buttons and 15 different pages. You can actually put a whole bunch of different keypad shortcuts. Uh, you can put a whole bunch of different programs and actions on there as well, which is absolutely mind blowing. And same thing, if you change out of your current app into a completely different app, then it gives you all the new shortcuts in that specific app. So in the general sort of programming that I've got on here when I'm just uh, surfing the web or you know doing all my uh, back-end work emails, it brings up all the pages that I need to get into really quickly. And then when I actually put the programs that I actually open up very frequently, like Google Docs, OBS, Epidemic Sound, it just made things so much easier and quicker to get to. So I'm not constantly just going to you know, my Google Chrome and then opening up the page or trying to find it within my bookmarked pages. I can literally just put it right here. And the cool thing is, is that you can actually customize all your icons. Now, I really wish I was a graphic designer so I could get some really cool custom icons, but uh, I'm not, so I just get the basic icon on there as well. And it's really simple to do. All you need to do is click into it and you can change the background, you can turn off your icons, you can turn on some text and write some text if you wanna do some customized work there. You can even go over to some default icons or even some loop deck media icons as well. It really just gives you so many different options, but you can customize it to whatever you want and whatever color you want as well. And then it really gets me used to the color scheme so I can actually know where the buttons are because essentially they've created this device to stop you looking down at your keypad trying to find all your shortcuts. They've just made it so much more simple where you can literally just glance at it and tap it and just keep your eyes on the computer and edit so much faster, more streamlined. Now when it comes to the shortcuts on this thing in Premiere Pro, don't really have too many. I've literally got the basic ones that I use pretty much all the time, like render my in and out points, import sequence settings, undo my in and out markers, and even just like my adjustment layers. I only really needed about six or seven, uh, but you still have nine with 15 different pages as well. So if you are an editor, this could be a really cool thing to have. And I think one of the great things about this device in comparison to the competitors is that this is usually connected to the dial pad. They've actually separated these to actually help you, you know, fit it within your workflow and your workstation because everyone has their workstations completely different. No one is ever going to be having the exact identical setup because a lot of people specialize in different programs, you know, uh, Adobe Illustrator, Premiere Pro, uh, Photoshop. There's a whole bunch of different programs that a lot of people use and specialize in. So 
having their fingers in certain spots could change depending on obviously what program you're in. Now I actually have this directly next to my mouse and it actually has a stand that it comes with that I generally have it on. You can actually sit it down, it's got this nice rubber thing on the bottom there which it doesn't slip and slide around which is great. Now the one thing that makes this a little bit different to the actual dial pad itself is that this actually connects directly through USB-C. Now I assume that they did this because they need to feed a little bit more power directly into this and if it was a rechargeable battery it would most likely have to be a bigger device to you know fit the battery in there and for it to last as long as they need it to last because this thing can go super bright and you could imagine how much power it actually utilizes and i do appreciate that it is a smaller size and so not having a battery in there and you know the size of it does matter when it is on your table because you don't want these massive clunky devices directly on your table now i know there are some competitors out there that specialize in editing and they are huge devices but they are specifically to that one app the logi options plus app allows you to have it fully customizable to your app and and the ones that are currently supported as well and because it is logitech and they constantly do firmware updates they will potentially you know reach out to more apps and you know optimize it for those specific programs and apps that you have now one thing i don't do but i know that this will actually suit is a lot of uh, graphic designers and i do have uh, a fair few graphic designer friends that have this device and they absolutely love it because their keypad shortcuts are perfect on this plus they customize their icons on here and theirs look super pretty mine doesn't look super pretty because i'm not a graphic designer but it looks good enough it's functional that's all i need any of these devices to be is fully functional make my workplace uh, faster and just obviously work smarter at the same time and that's one thing that we do have to talk about is that this could actually fit into your workflow completely seamless if you program it perfectly to how you want but your workflow will sometimes change and you'll start to you know grow into the actual devices and then obviously when the new firmware comes there'll be different uh, I suppose supported apps and then you'll have to change it so there is a little bit of a learning curve that you do actually have to go through with both of these devices but it can fit directly straight into uh, your workflow it really just depends on I guess the individual and how fast you are at picking up new devices or you know seamlessly integrating it into your workflow so anyway, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. I will obviously put a link in the description below so you guys can check this one out. Obviously highly recommended from me. I'm going to be talking about this for a few more times on my Instagram because I love these devices and I really, really think it's going to help your workflow specifically if, you know, you do switch from app to app and you need all these, you know, keypad shortcuts. It's just going to be so much more simple and streamlined for your workflow. So... Yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, let's get it.